but he's not so sure about this thing. It's okay. It's our friend. Good boy. Buddy. Buddy, we gotta film an intro. Come on, bud. Good boy, bud. Good boy. Let's do this, huh? Hello, and welcome back to Mommy with Migraine. I'm Jen, and this is my service dog, Buddy. I think it's pretty obvious why people get a service dog. They get a service dog because they have a disability and the service dog can mitigate that disability in some way. But there were actually some really great unintended consequences of getting a migraine. Wow, I'm getting a migraine. But there were actually some really great unintended consequences of getting a service dog. <laughs> I can't do this without laughing right now. So for this video, I wanted to go over the top three ways that my service dog helps me in ways that I did not expect. quarantine with the rest of you and unfortunately a couple of my nails broke so I broke the rest of them off and now they're a mess and I don't care I'm making you a video anyway UV filter broken UV filter if you're a tea drinker too please spill yo tea in the comments below let me know what kind of tea you like best let's go the first way that my service dog helps me that I never would have expected is that now I know my migraines way better than I did before and way better than I could have known them without him. I think that most service dog handlers have their service dog for more than one thing. I certainly do, but one of the very first tasks that Buddy had, maybe his first task ever, was migraine alert. And through that, I've learned so much about my migraines that I didn't know about before. One of the biggest problems when I get a migraine is that there's a ton of memory loss that happens, mostly during that main pain phase of the migraine. And so what would happen was, I would get all of these warning signs that a migraine was coming, the migraine would hit, I would totally forget, I would come out of the migraine in a haze. Once the dog started reliably alerting to the migraines, I was able to start recognizing some of the prodrome symptoms on my own, prodrome being the phase leading up to the main attack. I should make a video about the stages of migraine. I'll link it below when I eventually do. Basically, I was getting all these warning signs and I had no idea that they were warning signs. So migraines were sneaking up on me. So here are some of the things that I learned about my prodrome that I actually learned from my service dog. I start to stutter a lot. That's part of the... There it is. I never knew that I was yawning a lot before my migraines until Buddy started alerting me. In addition, I start stress cleaning, almost nesting, and that kind of thing. Even before I consciously know that a migraine is coming, I get uh, maybe anxious and, and start to clean out of anxiety. Another thing that really surprised me is I actually get silent migraines sometimes. I had no idea that I was having them. I thought that there were just some days that I was feeling off. Maybe I was tired or I didn't sleep well or I was stressed or I'm just moody or whatever. It turns out you can get silent migraines where you don't have any symptoms other than some of the weird woozy ones that people don't really recognize as migraine symptoms. And then the next day you wake up in postdrome and postdrome can make you very depressed. So now I recognize if Buddy alerts me the day before, I'm finishing up a migraine that I had overnight that I just didn't notice and that's why I'm feeling so depressed that morning. Boom. Mic drop. I can't actually drop my mic because it's mounted on the camera. The second way that a service dog helped me a lot that I wasn't anticipating is that I generally feel less panic. I don't get your standard super painful migraine. I get complex migraines. I get paralyzed. I get shaky. I forget where I am. I forget who I am. I get all of these really scary weird symptoms that people don't typically associate with migraines. Would just totally and completely freak me out. It's pretty unbelievable. It's a talent. Not everybody can have it. You guys are probably going to think I'm pretty crazy for admitting this on the internet, but literally when I see my service dog, the wave of relief that comes over me is due to seeing him and being like, oh yeah, I have a disability. That's why I'm confused. That's why I'm having palpitations. That's why I don't remember who I am right now. Before I had the service dog, the only things that I had to go off of were you know, people around who I recognized or, I don't know, like banking on my own memory to tell me things. It's ridiculous. I don't know how else to put it. But now that I have the service dog, I can look at him and say, oh yeah, I'm just disabled. This is my normal. <laughs> this would be so much easier without a migraine coming. Last but not least, 
Number three, the third thing that the service dog has helped me with in my life that I didn't anticipate is that friends and family take me more seriously now. That's sort of sad to say out loud, but it's very, very true. When I told people that I was getting a lot of migraines, that I had chronic migraines, even now, even though I'm very open about the fact that my migraines are nearly daily, I feel like when I tell people that I have a migraine one night, but then the next morning I wake up and I say that my migraine has broken, it's done, they're still surprised when another migraine comes that night. And I think um, once I got the service dog, people understood, oh, this is real. Oh, this is every day. Having a service dog also, frankly, is just a big hassle. It's especially a big hassle when you can't even really take care of yourself. I wouldn't be able to have a service dog if I didn't have my husband here taking care of the dog with me. There are definitely some nights that, for example, I don't feel well enough to take the dog out to pee. I really rely on my husband for that. I think that having the service dog made my friends and family realize that I'm not screwing around with this disability. I'm not trying to get out of things. I'm not doing any of that. I think the fact that most people don't get a service dog for even some pretty bad disabilities, it just made it so my friends and family take my disability a bit more seriously. And I feel like no matter how much I talked about it before I had my service dog, there was only so much that I could really get across to people. Now that I have the service dog though, I'm taken a lot more seriously. They realize that it's something that I'm in for the long run. I'm not getting any more of those remarks about, oh, you're getting a migraine again? Didn't you just have a migraine yesterday? Yes, I had one yesterday. Yes, I'm having one today. It's called chronic migraine. Chronic. And I'm going to take this opportunity to point out that when I said that friends and family take my disability more seriously, I intentionally did not include the public in that. I feel like having the service dog has invited many more people to come talk to me. It's invited a lot more people to ask me about my disability. And honestly, until I volunteer that information, it feels a little bit invasive. That's a video for another day. If you have a service dog, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Let me know if there's anything that you feel like I missed on this list. I am a brand new channel, so thank you a lot for watching this video, especially if you made it here to the very end. And if you're interested in more videos like this, whether it be about service dogs or about momming or about migraines, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. Ding! See you next time. Peace out. going. First video down. That's a rap. No, that's not a rap. That's a dance. Whatever.